20 seconds. Let's just keep honest, people honest. Marie Teresa. Daddy is RV. Elena Sandovici. Lauren Luna. Rodney D. Butler. Hugo Perez. Amy Cummins. Flux the artist. Lex Simone. Brandy Unz. Amy Malkin. Jean Barron. Teresa L. Staley. And Monique LaRue. Being out and talking to other artists is key to networking and growing. The next artist I saw online, and I loved how professional and active she was. So I just simply sent her a friend request on social media, and within a few months, she invited me to an event she hosted, which cultivated a lot of opportunities for me later, and someone to consider a trustworthy ally in the art community. She is a local public artist. Her artwork embodies beauty, positivity, and an abundance mindset and she carries it with grace everywhere she goes. And I can't wait for you guys to meet this next Houston artist. The question is, what is your message to the world? Damn. <laughs> Can you introduce yourself? Yep, my name is Amy Malkin. I am a public artist, professional speaker, author, and labyrinth builder. And a mother, and <laughs> and a cook, and a cleaner. <laughs> what do you love about the Houston art scene to Houston exclusively? Uh, yeah, I absolutely love the Houston art scene. I like the diversity in it. There are so many artists from so many different backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, uh, geographic backgrounds, and. They're all bringing their flavor to the art scene, which I love. I'm more involved in the public art scene, so I also see a lot of the variety and diversity there. And I also like, um, you know, the, the world that I'm kind of in. I like the fact that we're all abundantly seeking mindset people. So we're here helping one another. Uh, we're passing on um, deals and jobs to one another. Uh, we're giving advice, we're collaborating, and I, I really like that about the Houston artist scene. All right, so where did you get your first um, official or unofficial, but like art start in Houston, the place where you felt like, oh man, like I'm doing art and from here on out, I know I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah, so I started my journey seven years ago, quit my corporate job, became a waitress, and I just started doing um, painting. And uh, I, I knew when, that, when I made that decision of quitting my corporate job that that's what I was going to do. I just never dreamed of being a public artist, meaning doing big murals. I happened to meet my mentor in 2016 and he introduced me to the public art scene and when I painted my very first mural with his team, I was like, holy cow. Like I like painting big, but like this was big on another like level and I was ready. So since 2016, I knew that I wanted to do public art murals. So I do both, I paint canvases, but I also like painting large walls. So speaking of her love for murals, Amy took me on a field trip to see two of hers here in Houston. And she was excited to tell you and myself the stories behind both of them. So the backstory about this mural is I actually got this mural when I was seven months pregnant with Zenith and um, obviously I, it's pretty high up so I can't get on scaffolding and scissor lift to do this mural and I contracted this 
this out, so I hired two other artists to be able to uh, fulfill the project. I like um, doing community-based murals, so the handprints that you see behind me on the trees are actually the community's um, handprints, so I invited the community to come out uh, from the neighborhood, and then the women that, this is a nonprofit, Assistance League of Houston, uh, they've been around for a really long time, and so the board members, the nonprofit organization, and then the community members actually came out and put their handprints um, on this uh, type of material that I was able to then adhere to the wall. So it's their mural, and um, yeah, it was. A little, I, I actually enjoyed doing this. So I don't care what circumstance you're in, if you're pregnant, you're this, that, or that. It's possible. Go after your dreams. That's what I did with this this mural. So this is one of my favorite murals. It's located at CUNY Homes in Houston, Texas. And this particular mural was commissioned by the Super Bowl Houston Committee. So we had the Super Bowl come here in 2016. And um, they wanted murals all around the city. They're really big on community engagement uh, when they come to whatever city. So they were here in Houston and CUNY Homes was one of the locations and what made this particular mural so special to me was the fact that um, the design was created by the kids here at CUNY Homes and they also painted the mural. So um, I came here, I held a meeting with the community, they came and gave me their input of what they wanted that represented this area to them and this is what you see right here. So family was a big part, um, education and knowledge, so you see these cogs of transformation. It doesn't matter where you grow up, but you have the ability to transform to whoever you want to become. I love what I do. For me, it's not just putting pretty art on these walls, but it's actually being a part of the community, touching them, feeling them, transferring energy, and creating some dope-ass art in their community. How do you feel about being an artist during COVID-19 and the current events of 2020? You know, to be honest, I actually appreciated um, COVID and quarantine in the sense that it made me bunker down and really look at myself and my business. So I was able to be really introspective. I was really able to focus on things that I would normally put on the back burner because I'm always out and about and moving around. And so I just really utilized this time um, in the first two, three months, like really being in quarantine and looking at the back end of my business, my, you know, my website, my sales process, my operating procedures and all of these things and how I could make it more efficient uh, for myself and for my business. And then really just dove deep in how I can be of more of a service to the community uh, during that time rather than being like um, selfish and self-serving. So I started offering free virtual paint parties on Facebook, uh, which was amazing because it helped, you know, I, I got so many comments where one family was, they had experienced a death in the family unrelated to COVID, but still, nonetheless, it's still traumatizing. And um, th that paint party was a good icebreaker for the family that came together to do something that just took their mind away from, um, and that's, you know, that's the beauty of what I like to offer with my art. It's not just painting beautiful pictures, but it's, offering um, energy, it's offering solace, it's offering love, it's offering peace uh, through my art, whether it's viewing it or actually painting it themselves. What do you think the world needs more of in this time? I think the world needs more empathy and compassion. I think that regardless of anyone's views, we need to learn how to listen and to understand where that person is coming from everything is an illusion you know we are only seeing one second of that outtake and we don't know what happened prior to get them to that space and if we just take the time to listen rather than ready to jump and attack and to want to share our point of view or you know jam our point of view down that person's throat just like let's just listen to one another at the end of the day we're all human and at the end of the day we've all experienced hardships and heartbreak we all bleed red blood and we're all the same in that way. Yes, we have different viewpoints, um, but let's just be a little bit more understanding and compassionate to one another. And I think then we can, I think then we can 
get to um, a better, healthy place in the world. And I feel like we're all asking for the same thing. We're just saying it in different ways and we're doing it in different ways, but ultimately we all just want love and peace. So if we can just listen to one another and get past the garbage and all the nuances, then we can, we can get to that place faster. What do you think or feel we need less of in this time? I think that we need less of judgment and less of our ego selves. So most of us are coming from a place of fear and of hurt. And so then we're reacting off of hurt and fear. And if we step away and not, and not act based on our fears and act on base of love, we will get to a better place. Okay, so my message to my world, that's a really powerful question, Mo, um, really good question. I think my message to the world would be really listening to your own heart and soul's purpose. It sounds really easy, but it's a difficult task to do because we usually get you know, influenced by society and our own culture and our family and our friends. And we get bogged down with these negative thoughts of like, well, I don't really have anything important to say. I'm just a housewife or, you know, I'm just a mom or I'm just this or whatever that fill in the blank is for you. Um, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. It's not that important. I'm not influential. Like all of these negative sayings, but really each and every one of us have a unique story that needs to be shared and heard because somebody is going to resonate with it and somebody is going to be like, wow, I really needed to hear it at this time in this moment in my life because now it's aspired me to do something better or to do something more. And I think that the closer we get to trusting ourselves and listening to our own intuition, our own gut, we can, um, we can leave a magical footprint on this earth. Each and one of us have a unique footprint and can make a difference in our own respective communities. And I think, you know, once you, once you can get to that place and cut through all the BS and the illusions, um, you can make a difference in the world. Amy is just so full of positivity and she gives you all the good feels. After meeting Amy and then her studio mate, Alusi, I wasn't quite done with Sawyer Yard's art compound just yet. There's one artist I met in late 2019 and another that I met at the beginning of 2020. So we're getting there, closer to the now. And I can't wait for you guys to meet these next two Houston artists.